All righty, I think we're ready to get started. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to this event. We're really excited to see everybody here. I am Victoria Powers. I am the president of the Bexley School Board. I'm joined here this morning by my colleague, Dr. Baker, also a school board member. And I think all of our school board members will continue to participate in these as we go along. Thank you for coming. A year ago, over a year ago, we embarked on our strategic planning. We had a lot of these community sessions and we got a lot of really great input, information that was critical to the result, our, our strategic plan that I think really provides the community's roadmap for where education should be headed in Bexley. Now we are starting with one pillar of that, the facilities planning. It's a critical piece. I'm really excited that we are jumping off on that together today. We need all of you. We need to hear from you, your neighbors, your friends. So please encourage everybody to do what you did today. Come out, share ideas, and help us to visualize what space will be needed for our students to thrive in the 21st century. Thank you again for coming, and I'm gonna turn things over to our amazing superintendent, Dr. Fine. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the most important things that a superintendent learns to do to start any meeting is to thank the Board of Education. <laughs> we are so thankful for uh, Victoria, Dr. Baker that's here, our Board of Education. We are really unique. Uh, it is really challenging to be a board member in 2024 and we have a fantastic Board of Education that uh, fights for students each day. So thank you and we appreciate your involvement being here as well. We've got an exciting day. This is day one of a year and a half to two year journey. I think it's a historic day for Bexley because it's an important conversation that we wanna have about our facilities. And we'll talk about what that means. When you walked in, hopefully you received a couple of things. You should have signed in. If you need help signing in, we'll make sure we have support uh, in the back. We've got a door hanger that just has additional uh, dates that are important that you have access to. You also should have picked up an agenda, which you see on the screen, and then there are, is a front-to-back form for feedback that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. But if you need any support at any point throughout the uh, presentation, we'll make sure that we get to you. We're going to hold questions. Uh, we think that we'll have an opportunity to answer a lot of those questions. Uh, if you need anything, we'll be here at the end of the presentation as well. What you see on here is our agenda. The agenda, uh, we appreciate folks getting here to, to get us moving. We're going to talk about why we got here, how we got here. We're going to talk about our uh, process overview and the survey results that hopefully a lot of you participated in. We will then have Dr. Harley Williams will talk about uh, building teams that we hope you will be a part of. You can, uh, you can be a part of any of the teams that we've got. We've got five building teams. Then we'll talk about a visioning recap and our guiding principles, and that'll give you an opportunity to work uh, as a, a, in your seats to help us with some of that feedback. But I want to make sure that we understand our appreciation for you being here this morning. I know that there was a curveball and an outbound call went out. People were hoping for snow day, but no, it was even more important because it was about our facilities and about the future of, of Bexley. So we're really thankful that you made it here. Uh, we've got another event this evening, which we'll talk about multiple times. Uh, but what Victoria said is really important. We need you. You're going to hear that a lot over the next several months. We cannot do this without you. We need you, we need your friends, we need your family, we need your colleagues, we need your neighbors, we need your peers, we need your children. Because we wanna make sure that we do a process that is all encompassing of the needs of our community. This is a community process and we're really excited about the opportunity to partner with our Bexley community. Right now, we're at this exciting moment, day one of our assessment phase. During the assessment phase, we're identifying where we are now. What, what are we currently sitting at? What are we looking at in terms of our uh, buildings and facilities? And when we talk about that, don't just think uh, bricks and mortar. The facilities plan is a process to look at everything that we do. When we look at playgrounds, when we look at athletic space, when we look at parking, when we look at those types of things, it's also the buildings, and we'll talk about what that means with regard to the buildings and how we take a look and assess those things. But that's the phase we're in right now. We'll do that through March. We have an options phase that'll run April through October of 24. And this is where we take a look at what's possible. What are the options that our community feels is 
uh, possible for our facilities plan. This is going to be a community conversation. You'll hear us say that quite a bit. We're not making decisions on what the superintendent believes, what the board president believes. It's what our community is looking for. So that'll be an important part of our options phase that comes as a result of all of the uh, feedback that we get from our community. Our decisions phase comes uh, November 24th to March of 2025. That is where we're going to take a look at what it is that we want to do and when. So that's an important piece of the puzzle that we will take a look at that will be coming up. All of this is going to be uh, provided and facilitated by our incredible design team. I'm going to talk about this team here shortly. Uh, but our friends at Perkins and Will and Moody Nolan are superstars. They've done a fantastic job getting us to this point. We'll talk a little bit about more, uh, a little more about their partnership uh, shortly. But they're going to guide us through this conversation and process. So why now? I've joked a little bit that uh, long before I arrived, there was a facilities conversation in Bexley. You've been talking about facilities for a long time, and I'm well aware of that. But I do want to talk about some of the things that have put us in the room today. And Victoria touched a little bit on it. We have gone through a really robust strategic plan process over the last, uh, I'd say, starting last year in September. We went through a robust process that is going to look very similar to what we've done in this process. We wanted to get community feedback. We thought it was important. I had heard from the community that you didn't want a cookie cutter strategic plan and you didn't want anything that was predetermined by the superintendent or by the Board of Education. And I believe we delivered just that. We had a, an important process. We had over 3,000 data points. You can see every data point from that process on our website. Carol Taylor, who is our public information officer, who's in the back, does a phenomenal job of capturing uh, the story. So we felt it was important to be transparent in that process, and through that process, we created a strategic plan to help guide the district over the next three years, uh, and that we did that through a transparent process of community involvement. I want to talk a little bit about that. That process created uh, a lot of feedback. In the feedback, we started to learn really quickly that it was pretty simple what the community wanted, and it helped us identify a mission statement. And our mission statement is really powerful. It is simple but powerful. It talks about learning with curiosity, demonstrating kindness, and embracing equity. Those were the three non-negotiables. It makes up our DNA. It is who we are in Bexley. It's who we must be in Bexley. And that DNA should be through all of us. That is our staff, our students, our community, our families. It's a powerful mission statement that helps us then identify our values. Our values help us further describe our DNA, and this is where we talk to our, uh, our staff and our students. The values is where we default to when we're making challenging decisions. We must lean on our values when we, when we move through a day-to-day -day process with our students. I always tell our, our staff and our students, there's two E's, two I's, two R's, and a W to help you remember. Equity, empathy, integrity, inclusion, responsibility, respect, and well-being. Those are the values that further describe who we must be in Bexley. If you live your values and your mission every day, then you create schools and spaces where we have culturally responsive teaching happening, where we have joy and an ethic of care, where we have a sense of belonging and well-being, where our students feel safe and our staff feel safe. That is why it is important that we live our mission and our values so that the schools are creating places where our students want to be and they feel loved and cared for. That's an important piece, and that's not just in our classrooms. That's in our locker rooms. That's in our athletic fields. That's on the stage. That's in the hallways. That's uh, in the community. That is why the mission, vision, and values are so important to our, our students in Bexley. So once we identified our mission, vision, and values, we, we identified quickly through the community feedback, uh, through lots of conversation, three, four, we created four really important themes that came out loud and clear right out of the gates through that work. You see on the board that we had three themes emerge at the bottom, but what was really important is our fourth subcommittee was diversity, equity, and inclusion. So when we started through digging into the process of what we wanted our strategic plan to be, those four subcommittees started meeting, and early on in the process, the diversity, equity, and inclusion subcommittee said it is important that we are not a silo, 
and something that is separate from the other three themes, it should be woven into all of the work that we do. So diversity, equity, and inclusion became the through line within everything in our strategic plan. And I love that our strategic plan, if you take a look at it, can be found on our website. Uh, you can access it. When you look at our strategic plan, it's color-coded to show you where our uh, folks from our diversity, equity, and inclusion partnered with our other groups to identify where in each of our three themes, diversity, equity, and inclusion lives within our strategic plan. The other three themes you see on the board uh, was a big part of our process. You see culture, teaching and learning, and what brought us here today, facilities. And facilities it was an important process that our goal that was born out of our strategic plan, and there are a lot of sub-goals and a lot into our strategic plan. Don't let this look that it is so simple, uh, but this was the guiding force of our facilities plan. Our goal is to develop a district facilities plan, which is what we're doing right now, that will efficiently utilize spaces and resources to address the growing population and evolving needs of the district. So that's what puts us in the space in terms of a strategic plan. That strategic plan was approved by our Board of Education in May of 2024, sorry, May of 2023, uh, and immediately we started working to get to today. That's why today is an exciting time. But as I said at the beginning, you were having conversations about facilities before we started our strategic plan. We are well aware of that. So a couple of highlights that have happened prior to the strategic plan, which assists in telling the story. District Facilities Advisory Council. We've had a District Facilities Advisory Council in place uh, since 2018. That has been led by Dr. Harley Williams. This is a group that has met. It involves uh, staff members and community members. The Facilities uh, Committee has lots of conversations. They've taken tours. They take a look at what our facilities uh, how they are functioning, what the needs of our facilities are, and that's a, a process that's been in place since 2018, led by Dr. Williams. We've also had a finance advisory council, and I see members uh, of both of those groups that are sitting in this space. That group, uh, very similar, they assist us in making sure that we are efficient as a district. That is led by our treasurer, Kyle Smith, who's in the back as well. Uh, this group has had many conversations about our facilities plan, which is really important. They have assessed and reviewed the needs of our current uh, facilities, and they too have supported the need for a facilities plan. So we appreciate the work of both of those groups. Those have been in place since 2018, and I believe the, uh, the financial committee was even around earlier than that, but the current makeup of the folks that you saw uh, really started in 2018. The Ohio Facilities Construction Commission Review of Buildings, so also referred to as the, F the OFCC. The OFCC, uh, they provide, the state provides a free service to schools that will come in and take a look at your schools and review what your current conditions are, what your current needs are. The OFCC came in in 2017. They did a needs assessment in 2017. Well, a lot has happened since 2017. So what we do is we take that information from the OFCC review in 2017. We work with our incredible team here uh, at Perkins and Will and Moody Nolan, our business manager and our, our district operations and facilities teams. They take that information because we've done a lot of work since 2017 based off of the recommendations that the OFCC gave us. But we've not done it all because they, we have a lot of needs. We take that data, what have we done, what still needs to be done, and we create a report that puts us into what 2024 looks like in terms of that OFCC report. So we'll have access to that as well. So we appreciate our team in getting us to that space. We've also had a group of uh, community and uh, staff members that helped us select our, our architectural team. That was a lengthy process. We wanted to be very meticulous about that process to make sure that uh, we found someone that would partner with us and, and was a nice connection to Bexley. We'll talk a little bit about that team a little bit later. And then the creation of guiding principles, hot off the press. A leadership team yesterday, along with some incredible community members, spent an entire day yesterday working with our firm here today, uh, identifying the guiding principles, which is a really important foundation for the work that we're going to do. You're going to have an opportunity to provide us feedback on those guiding principles, because without that feedback, uh, we will not have the type of community guiding principles that we're looking for. So that's an opportunity you'll see a little bit later in the show. But hot off the presses, making copies this morning, and uh, we're excited to get your feedback uh, on that as we move. 
So a couple of things, and I'm going to hand it off to our friends uh, from Perkins and Will and Moody Nolan. Some facts that I think are in people's minds that we want to make sure people have access to. Uh, we also have frequently asked questions that are on our website for, for additional questions that you may have. But no decisions have been made. I live in the community. I've got a junior in the community. I hear a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm not on the buzz, but I hear there's the buzz. And I know there are a lot of thoughts out there that I don't know why I would need to go. There's probably already some decisions made. We assure you, we do not have decisions made. We have no idea what this will look like a year and a half to two years from now. No idea. We'll know more as we go through each of these sessions as you continue to give feedback because we need your feedback in order to help us drive the decisions. You will have access to absolutely everything we do. If uh, you weren't able to be here, you can see that we've got uh, it being recorded. We're going to send this out to our community. If you don't have the ability to get to these meetings, we'll record a, each session uh, to make sure that folks stay informed. Also, there is no zero cost option. There is no zero cost option. What that means is uh, our buildings, on average, are 84 years old. I wish they weren't, but that is our reality. We have aging buildings and we have aging systems. And our team does an incredible job. That's the beauty of working in Bexley. Our maintenance and our custodial crew and our students and our staff take great pride in where we show up to work and, and educate students. And it may appear to be looking beautiful. And I love that about our team. But the reality is, is what's above the ceilings, what's below the floors, what's behind the walls, those systems are aging. And if our buildings are on average 84 years, we have to, uh, to make some decisions on how we want to address those things. There's no zero cost option because right now, we are updating systems as we speak. That costs money. We are financially taking a look at that. That's why those advisory, uh, financial advisory committees are so important. Those are conversations we have. Uh, but there's a decision that we have to make as to continuing to do what we're doing or other options that are potential. Residential and commercial structures are very different. So this is always tough, and even for me to understand. I'm a homeowner. It is different. It is not the same to have a residential upgrade versus a commercial upgrade. And I've, I've used a couple different analogies. I'll try a different one this morning. We have 400,000 square feet of schools. So that would be the equivalent of taking uh, 200 2,000 square feet residential spaces and throwing 13 of our students into each one of those spaces and them using the restroom all day long. That's why this is such a difference in terms of commercial versus real estate. Uh, we have experts that are going to help guide us through those differences and why it's different from how we upgrade in our own home versus what we do as a larger community. You've heard it again. You're getting tired of it. We need you. We need to hear from you. We love that you're here on day one. We're going to continue to reach out for, uh, to you to continue to get your feedback. And lastly, you've heard us say we are committed to an open and transparent process. Uh, you can count on that. Our design team. I'm really excited about this group from uh, Perkins and Will, Moody Nolan. I have lived this process as a community member and a staff member in a different district. I've seen this group do their work. They're incredible. It speaks for itself. But we wanted to make sure it worked for this community. Uh, we're really proud of the work that's happened to date. We're really excited for what is potential. Uh, this group together, two incredible firms. Uh, Perkins & Will is out of Chicago. Moody Nolan is here based out of Columbus. They have done 1.25 million square feet of plans and designs together. They've worked for over a decade, and like I said, their work speaks for themselves, and I'm really excited for the unique experience that they're gonna provide us as we go through uh, a facilities plan. So I'm gonna hand it over to Steve Turks from Perkins and Will. Let's give it up for Steve. Thanks, Jason. Ah, good to have that. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's exciting to be here today with you. I would uh, I think what I'm going to start is I'm just I'm Steve Turks as Jason said with Perkins of Will, I'm a, a principal with the firm, focused uh, my career on K through 12 uh, school uh, school projects, and I'm going to just ask the team here to introduce themselves real quickly. Good morning. I'm Amy Ekman, Steve's partner, also a, a K through 12 principal at Perkins and Will. Thanks for being here. 
And, and I'm Kurt Moody. I'm the founder of the firm and chairman as, it, as, of, as of the day. Um, I'm Brent Wilcox with Moody Nolan. Um, I'll be your facilities assessment leader. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lauren Turnage. I am a project architect at Moody Nolan, and I am part of the facilities assessment team. And hi, Amelia Al Hashimi. I am part of the community. I'm also part of the Moody Nolan team, and I am going to be the community liaison. And I'm excited to get this kicking off. Great. Thank you, team. We also have a, a couple of consultants that uh, are helping us along the way, specific, specifically for the uh, facility assessment piece and when it comes time to begin to look at uh, options and the cost of those options, we've got a cost consultant on board as well uh, with Concord Addis. All right, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about process. Jason has done actually a really good job describing this uh, for you. We're really in three big phases here. We are really at the very beginning. Um, and uh, as, as Jason mentioned, we don't walk into this with any preconceived notions about what's going to come out the other side of it. We've done this process with any number of school districts and clients here in the US and abroad. We have a lot of faith in the process that a, a good outcome and one that's uniquely tuned to Bexley will come out the other side of this. But we really don't enter this understanding or knowing what that outcome will be. And a big part of the reason for that is we need your voices in the process. And so the, the process is really designed to, to gather that kind of input, not only from the professionals that work every day within the schools and the students in the schools, but you as community members and com community constituents. We can't do this without you. I always like to say that the best, the best schools that we design, that we, clients that we've worked with, those schools reflect the values and the aspirations of the communities that they serve. That should be the case here, and I, I know that will be the case here in Bexley. So the assessment phase is really about gathering a lot of the, the data, which I'll talk about in a moment um, with a little bit more detail. Options, by the time we've got all that information gathered, we know a lot at that point, and we can then begin to start to iterate options that, you know, different scenarios for each of the five, uh, five schools and three campuses. And after we've gone through a, an iterative process where we're gathering feedback and information from you as community members, from those that work within the buildings every day, from students, uh, and we start, began to narrow those options down or those scenarios down at each campus, then we'll start to apply some cost to those informations that allow then decisions to be made across the board district-wide. Uh, and importantly, that community engagement is a critical key piece out throughout the entire process. What that looks like on, on a, a Gantt chart, a, a, a sort of a bar chart schedule, uh, you'll see a, approximately over the next 15 months, we're expecting to have a deliverable uh, to the board so to allow them to make some decisions uh, in, in the, in later in the first quarter of next year. So it's a very deliberative process. It's one that takes time, that we need to invest time, that we're hoping you will invest time in for a, a really strong, positive outcome. It's something that really reflects the needs and aspirations of Bexley that really embodies the, uh, the strategic plan. Um, why do we do this? Uh, it's a good strategic thing to do, uh, to take a critical look at your capital expenditures and, and the needs of your facilities. And one of, the, one of the important things with a district facilities plan is so that you're not spending money today that five years from now you'd look back and say, you know what, we shouldn't have done that project. Um, because the, you know, the, what we're about to do is gonna unwind some of those investments that we made five years ago. So we're really, the three, three major pieces of this, um, we're gonna be looking at, and, and the process has already started looking at, and the update of that facility assessment that OFCC did that Dr. Fine mentioned just a moment ago, that is underway. That is really looking at what we sometimes call bricks and mortar. Does the roof need to be replaced? How, how, what's the condition of the mechanical system? Do windows need to be replaced? It doesn't look so much at the qualitative aspects of how's this building actually functioning as a school? That's the educational adequacy assessment which actually starts today. We'll be walking through with principals today uh, we've already dialed in, uh, we'll be talking about the guiding principles, we've already dialed those into the assessment that we will be, uh, again, starting today and tomorrow uh, for that work. 
So that does look at the qualitative aspects. Um, we'll be looking at safety and security. We're gonna be looking at lighting, acoustics, all sorts of things uh, in terms of how the buildings are actually functioning as schools. The third piece of that puzzle on the screen is the financial assessment. As I mentioned just a moment ago, that's a little ways away. After we've got some scenarios developed that we've begun to narrow down, we'll begin to apply some cost to those. When we bring that all together uh, for the sort of a big picture of what's happening in the district relative to facilities to allow some decisions to be made in that third and final phase. But again, it's a real strategic look at shore facilities overall. It's a very prudent thing to do. Uh, it's something that typically, you know, from time to time gets updated uh, as, as the needs on the ground uh, change. We talked, and Dr. Fine talked about the 2017 assessment that OFCC did. Uh, Brent and his team are, from Moody Nolan, are leading the update of that. They've been in the buildings, they've had those you know, conversations about, okay, what has happened since 2017, and applying those to a uh, current assessment that will be prepared and finished here in, uh, in 2024. Uh, part of that is uh, going into the buildings and using a little technology that you might see oftentimes on a realtor's website. It's a Matterport scan of all the buildings. We're creating digital twins of all the buildings that allow us to, you know, get back into them essentially virtually anytime that we need to. And we can do things even like taking dimensions. You'll see this is uh, in the, uh, the lower level, the, the first level at Montrose in the cafeteria. You know, that we know that the ceiling, floor to ceiling height in there is seven feet, seven inches. Uh, Matterport will help us do that. So it's a lot of qualitative and quantitative information that we can get from, from this and it does allow us to get back into the buildings anytime. We're also looking, you know, taking a look at, you know, uh, mechanical systems. Everything you see on the screen are sort of part and parcel of that uh, assessment and the update to that assessment. So again, really looking at the physical characteristics of each of the buildings. The educational assessment, as I mentioned just a moment ago, is looking at more qualitative aspects of the building. How's the, how's the building really functioning as a school? But we will be looking at lighting, acoustics, uh, thermal comfort, uh, any number of things. And we'll be talking about the guiding principles here in just a bit after Amy runs you through the survey res uh, results. Uh, we've already dialed those into the, into the assessment, as I mentioned just a moment ago. It's really important, the guiding principles that we spent the day yesterday developing, and that you all are gonna have a chance to take a look at and, and provide some comment on today and other community members this evening uh, as well, uh, because it is an important aspect of how we look at each and every one of your schools. Uh, do they, from the, from the guiding principles that have, are in draft form now, uh, they're not final, but they're in draft form, they need your input, uh, how, how do your schools stand up against those ideas? Those, so those are important, important uh, principles that as we go forward. The process is designed, as I mentioned, to gather uh, your feedback throughout the entire process. So we're here today uh, with, in circle number one. Today is really about understanding what the process is, uh, having opportunity for you to provide input into the process, and understanding that, as, 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 uh, as Harley will mention in just a few moments, that you have an opportunity to, to uh, uh, volunteer some time at each one, each, each, uh, at the building teams if you've got a particular interest in one of the buildings. But as we go through this, you'll see the dates across the, the midsection of, of the, uh, the screen. We're always going to be offering a morning session and an evening session. Uh, for the first two sessions, uh, today, January 23rd and March 12th, it's on the same day, and then after that, it's an evening uh, followed by the next morning. Okay, but there's topics as we go through this that uh, as, the, as the master, as the facilities, district facilities plan progresses, we will be sharing that and getting your feedback as we go through that. So at this point, I'd like to invite Amy Ekman to talk about the online survey. Okay. So how many of you participated in this survey? Do we have, all right, see there was a huge amount of participation from the community. Um, we have some numbers up here on the screen of the participation, 443 community members responded. Um, almost 90% of those folks have students currently in the schools, which is not surprising. Uh, we had a huge amount of educators respond as well, more than 50%. For those of you who know surveys, that's a really high amount. And 
just uh, over 100 students responded, mostly high school. And what we decided yesterday, as we learned, it was a surprise for most people in the room that students didn't respond as much as we hoped. So as a caveat, this was sent out right before the holiday break and was re-sent out during and after, but that's a really busy time for students and families and all that. So uh, we are gonna give an opportunity to reopen this survey to students, allow some more student voice to be heard, as well as figure out a way to, to get elementary school student feedback. That was something that came out of our meeting yesterday. So we'll learn this process molds as, as we learn from you all. You can see a breakdown of the educators pretty evenly across the schools responded as well. So this, these were some common themes we saw across the, the survey comments. So just to make sure um, everyone understands, these were just the open-ended survey at the end of the, the quantitative survey that said, anything else you wanna tell us about. So this doesn't mean that the students didn't care about all of these things, it just means that they didn't have an open-ended response to that. So just wanna be clear about that and hopefully this will get updated as we hear more from them. Um, but all of those themes on this list are things that came up multiple, multiple times in the open-ended survey. So things that people took the time to write about and that they care deeply about. Um, natural light was one I, I'm sure some of you know. Uh, there are some classrooms that don't have natural light. That's really important, we know, for student development, so something we want to look at. Um, just the quantity of classrooms, having larger classrooms to be able to do more of the, the types of, of teaching and learning that uh, you do here in Bexley. Attention to special education spaces, accessibility, meeting space, collaboration space. I'm saying all these because they're, they're important. Um, restrooms, uh, you'll see parking. I'm sure some of you may be concerned about that. I'm just, just, a, just a hunch. Um, Lots of other things, all of these were reflected in the, sur in the quantitative survey as well. So um, we're not gonna share all of that information with you today because there's just, I think you might uh, keel over with boredom from bar charts, but um, we are gonna share that on the website so you'll have all of that to be able to look at on your own time. Um, so we asked uh, about multiple, multiple aspects across each campus. Um, how satisfied are you with these things? So we're sharing a few examples of what this looks like. So when you look at it on your own time, you know what you're, what you're seeing. Uh, classroom space, the blue is satisfied and, and very satisfied. The yellow is neutral. And the orange, somewhat satisfied. Pink, not satisfied at all. So you can just get a sense that students are actually quite content with the classrooms. Um, anything that's white means that uh, people did not answer that, so not applicable is what that's listed as. So you'll see in some of the community responses that we compared that there's there's more white because some of the community members may not know what classroom spaces are like. They may not have experienced those. Um, we asked across each campus what that looks like, and you'll see a little bit more of the pink and orange at the Cassingham campus. It's, it's crowded, as, as we know. Um, accessibility, just something to note. Um, it's some, it's it needs a little bit of looking at. This is the community feedback on accessibility. And I th again, you'll see a little bit more of a theme that it's, it's more challenging at the Cassingham campus, at least according to the survey results. Parking. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something we'll be looking at, the, all of your sites, uh, all-encompassing buildings as well. So obviously something that we know needs attention. This is the community feedback on that. Again, not surprising. Restrooms, just something we wanted to highlight. It's important we all, we all have to use them, and it's important that they uh, are, are reflective of what you want them to be. This is a fun one we always like to ask students what their top favorite places to learn are. And what it really tells us is that we need a variety of spaces to serve students. Every student is an individual. Every student has their way that they like to learn. Some like a loud Starbucks. I like a quiet room. I don't like music. Some love music. It's just, you. so every kid needs a different type of space. And how can we provide that variety and functionality for your students to learn best? And I think we're on to Dr. Williams. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Again, my name is Harley Williams. I'm Director of Facilities and Operations. I've been in the district for, we moved in in 2000. In 2000, I became the middle school principal. And in 2000, they had just wrapped up the facilities planning process. And so I was here, uh, Chris Essman was my treasurer, and we embarked, I think, right after I got hired on a, a levy camp, a bond issue, right? And then I think we started building in about 2002. So 10 years I serve as a middle school principal, eight years I serve as a high school principal. I assume this role in 2017, 2018. And when John and I sit down and we're looking at things, we, we didn't really have a plan. There wasn't a plan. And I thought, well, we got a lot of things we're working on uh, and we're trying to bounce back and forth. So we were very grateful that our process through the strategic plan recognized this and said, hey, we got, I don't care what the plan is, and I'll reiterate that again. We don't have a, the plan in detail, but we know we need a plan. We need it for our future. I'm also, I, I'm a grandparent of a six-month-old beautiful baby girl. She's a Bexley High School class of 2043. <laughs> All right? So we're, we're building something for other people. And at the same time, having three daughters that graduated through Bexley, Man, I, I owe a lot of gratitude to the people that came before me and put, the, put our buildings in place, and you can tell they valued education by the grandiose facades of the buildings. They're just beautiful, and, our, and I'm so fortunate my kids got this, and I'm excited about engaging in this process with our community because we are the investors of this school. We are the investors. This is our schools, and, and we have to work together to do that. So as you can tell, I'm excited. I'm excited about this process. Um, and I'm, my job here today, I had like 10 pictures I want to show you of my granddaughter. They told me to take them off that you wouldn't <laughs> want to see them. But she is cute. So our building teams, our building teams are where we need you. We are looking for volunteers, and we, we, we're not limiting the number of participants. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit next slide about collective wisdom. We need your input. Um, on our building teams. We, want, we need solutions-oriented people, right? We've got, we have issues, as Dr. Fine mentioned, and our people, and, and like I say, John does a great job with his team making sure our buildings and our walls, everything's clean and looks good, but uh, we have issues. I get, I get phone call, I had a phone call this morning about parking. I had a phone call this morning about our athletic facilities weren't warm enough. Um, and we do our best to make sure that our students get the best, uh, best that we have. So we'd like for you to be a part of this building teams. So what is a building team? There'll be five teams. Each team will represent the, uh, a building in the district, okay? And uh, um, there's one team for each school. And the schedule is set up so that you can be a part of an elementary position, a building team, a middle school team, and a high school team if you choose to be a part of all three. Um, Elementaries kind of meet on the same day, and there's some overlap, so I don't think you can be on every single committee, <laughs> but you could be a part of as many as you'd like to be a part, as far as middle school, high school, and elementary school. Uh, all we ask is that you bring your perspective. You have different experiences when you walk into a building than maybe I do. And I want, we want to know what those are. Um, you, you do not have to, you just bring your ideas and your perspective. We'll have building principals lead these meetings, and our design team folks here will lead the meetings. And if you can't be a part of those meetings, don't worry about it. We're going to post our, it'll be documents that'll be created because of this, and we'll post it online so you can kind of stay up to speed on the progress that we're making as a team. And as I said earlier, there are no limits. Um, but we do ask that the people that, that commit to these team, uh, team meeting, building team meetings, there's six meetings. And we're going to ask you to try to com commit to as, as many as you can, five or six, um, because it, it, it's, it makes it hard work for the committee when people are not here this week and that week. And so um, we'd like for that, that kind of commitment. And I gave most of you a, a, a door hanger with the dates on there uh, so you can kind of see that and start planning if you want. Now, I shouldn't have given it to you now. I should have waited until the end of the meeting because now you're going to look at them. Um, Next slide. Let's move over here then. Uh, he's like, Dr. Fine says, we need you. Um, 
and I said a little bit ago about collective wisdom. I had a college professor in my graduate program, and he always used the term collective wisdom. And I thought, oh, that's a pretty cool word. He talked about as educational leaders, as a principal at the time, or aspiring principal, he talked about you're going to have issues, and the best solutions are always solved with collective wisdom, bringing as many smart people in a room, gathering input, and you always come up with a better solution. And there are exercises that they use, like Bost at Sea. You might have seen those online where you get together and you do those exercises, and they always work. It's, it's amazing. And so uh, this is the process of collective wisdom in our community. We're going to gather people around. We're going to get your perspectives. We're going to get your feedback, your insights, your thoughts. And from that, I promise you, we'll develop a very good plan. I don't know what the plan will be yet, but I guarantee it will be a good plan. Um, just bring your diverse perspectives, and we think that you know your, our buildings quite well, because you're in there quite a bit as well with your students, and your students' feedback and things like that all help. Um, our essential questions. Our building team essential questions are on the board there, but that's going to be basically what your building principal and design team will help us answer these questions when you sit down in these building team meetings. In what ways are our facilities not meeting the expectations and needs of our stakeholders now? And maybe what you might predict they would not meet in the needs of the future. And then the second essential question is uh, just, you know, earlier we shared a quick synopsis of the district's educational vision, right? Then the buildings teams will help identify the changes that need to occur in order for the people in that school and our school buildings to facilitate and align with that district mission, uh, our educational vision. So I think that's very important as well. So those are what's going to drive our work. Those questions will drive your work. And the goals, uh, your goal is basically to serve as a liaison between your community and our committee our building team. Your, your task will be bring your perspective, but also share with your neighbors, share with your friends in the neighborhood, find out what they're hearing and say, I, you know, I'm going to go back. And not everyone can be at the meetings, but we can get their input and you can help us bring that in there. So that'll be one of the, the most important job you have on that committee. And uh, at, you'll also, as a committee, be asked to create a briefing paper uh, um, on the topic of those two essential questions. You'll answer those questions and be asked to bring, put it in writing in a document, and that document will be shared with the Board of Education. As I said, team schedule's up there. I gave you a team schedule today as well, so I don't think we need that slide too long. Um, and again, as you'll see here, you could attend four schools if you wanted to. I'm not sure why you would. But there's, you, you, you could do all, you could, you have a choice on the 12th of an elementary school, and then the 13th is uh, middle school and high school. And I think that it's important is that these meetings, the, the first meeting will be in person. The first meeting will be in person. The other five meetings will be virtually, will be virtual meetings. And last but not least, uh, you can sign up for uh, your building teams through this uh, QR code, or if you have you know, want to email me or contact anyone at the school if you want to be a part of these committees. I mean, don't let any, we don't want any barriers for someone not being a part of this process if they want to be a part of it. I'll give you time to take that QR scan. I'll leave that up for a little bit. I think, see, all the phones are down. I'll just stand out of the way. Okay. All right. Well, the next thing I have here is that we are bringing back up the visioning recap session. Yep. Steve? Yep. And I'll be in the back afterwards if you want to see pictures of my grandbaby. <laughs> I want to see those pictures, of Dr. Williams. Okay, so as was mentioned already, we spent a day uh, working with our, our sleeves rolled up yesterday. The goal of the day was to uh, share lots of information. We gave 
the participants sort of a, a tour of school facilities around the world just to get the juices flowing. We talked a lot about a lot of different ideas. Uh, we put people to work in small group sessions to answer a couple of really important questions and uh, get their feedback and input with the goal being to ultimately walk out of the day's work with a set of guiding principles that would help inform the development of the district uh, facilities plan. Uh, one of the things we also did was we asked participants to, you can see up in the upper left-hand corner, what was a blank sheet of paper that says, I imagine for Bexley um, City Schools. It's a way that we as the design team can really, and we did this early on in the, in the session, to begin to gather feedback and ideas about people's goals and aspirations and values around, around their schools and around their school buildings, their school facilities. So this stuff, all this information, we'll get this uh, recorded. Uh, we'll transfer that to uh, a document and get that recorded and get that uh, posted onto the district's website. But every participant uh, did that. And you can see just a, a handful of the folks that were there. Okay, so this is an important slide. Uh, I'm gonna leave this up for just a moment and go through this with you. And, and I wanna start by saying this is a draft, as it says in those nice red letters there, because this is, as Dr. Fine said at the very beginning, this is hot off the press from yesterday. So we, sp we had our meeting, we spent some time trying to categorize thoughts and ideas and do some wordsmithing, but we fully acknowledge it's not a finished product. And one of the reasons it's not finished is, be, finished is because it doesn't have the input from the community and, and everybody. But let me go through this. So the idea with this is, again, as we are looking at facilities and importantly, as we begin to uh, iterate ideas and solutions, we want to have a document that we can say, okay, does this solution embody the principles uh, you know, of the guiding principles? Okay, so I'm gonna read these. Uh, you all can do that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read along and you can, you can follow with me. Our Bexley School facilities will support powerful learning experiences with a variety of intentional, multi-use, flexible, and adaptable spaces. It will inspire curiosity, joy, and connection, and provide a variety of opportunities, curricular, extracurricular, community-oriented uh, opportunities. School facilities will foster well-being and a sense of belonging, meet the needs of each learner, provide equitable, inclusive, and accessible spaces, and be safe and secure, both physically and social, socially and emotionally, and be designed with, uh, for the future and honor the past, and be sustainable and resilient, be efficient, fiscally responsible and built to last. So I think you can probably see within that many of the things that uh, are part and parcel of your strategic plan found their ways into these guiding principles. Uh, but there's a lot of ideas, lots of conversations that happen to generate these. And really at this point, um, we wanna get your thoughts and feedback on this. And so um, we're gonna have you Think about this on your own and work perhaps with folks that are immediately adjacent with you. And um, we wanna give you five minutes to sort of look at and review, um, provide some additional thoughts. We've got some forms, I believe, that, did everybody get one when you walked in for the guiding principles? Digital There's digital and virtual. So we, wanna, we would like to, um, uh, you know, have you again, Think about this on your own. Feel free to communicate with the folks that are sitting close nearby you. And uh, if you don't have the QR code right in front of you, here it is on the screen. Uh, it will uh, come up on your phone. We suggest that it's easier to orient your phone in a landscape orientation when, you, when you're looking at that, uh, the QR code. So we'll leave that up on the screen. But really like to you know, provide some time now. We've got I think about 30 minutes dialed in. I don't know that we'll need all that 30 minutes, uh, but have you take a look at those guiding principles. We really do want your feedback. There's a couple of other questions for you on the form. They're also there digitally if you'd rather do that. We're happy to get the, uh, the input in either way. Dr. Fine, anything else that you want to add to that? 
Carol's passing out pens if you need a pen. Um, we're here certainly to uh, answer questions as, as long as you need us to be. All right, everyone. We're going to bring everyone back. Great job. Rich conversations happening. Great questions as we were walking around and floating throughout the room. Really appreciate the deep dialogue that took place. A couple of things before we uh, wrap it up. Appreciate you hanging in there with us. If you have not, we will collect, if you had a hard copy of your feedback form, we'll collect those as we go out. Mr. Pettit and others will be at the door. We'll take that from you. If you have not submitted your virtual feedback form, you have access to that. The QR codes are also around uh, the space, but also on your, your hard copy of your digital form. If you didn't sign in, please make sure we get that because that's an important piece uh, as we go through the process as well. Reminder that we have the same event this evening. So if you have friends, neighbors, colleagues, peers that have not been able to attend today, remind them that we'll do the same uh, process this evening. You see the dates that are on the, the door hanger as well. We want to make sure that we get folks in the space. If your friends can't make it, just remind them that we'll have that on our website here shortly. Building team meetings, Dr. Williams talked uh, about. We want to make sure that you know you have access to any of those. We do love that if you have the opportunity to commit to those, that would be great. We tried to make that a little easier on our families so that we made the uh, first meeting in person, as, as Harley said. The other five will be virtual to hopefully give you a little more access to those types of meetings. There's a quote that I often refer to in education uh, from Eugene Ware, and it says, all glory comes from daring to begin. All glory comes from daring to begin. We're here on day one. It is not easy to make these types of decisions and to, as a community member, to say, I'm coming in there, the weather's terrible, but I want to be there because I want to be part of this. We're really thankful that we're in the space, and it is not going to be easy. There's going to be challenges, and I'm a big believer that challenges breed opportunity. We have a great opportunity as a community to take a look at what it is that we want for the future of our students. And I'm really thankful as the superintendent to serve in Bexley. I also think it's a great responsibility. It's a responsibility of us as a community to do what those who came before us, as Harley talked about. Folks, 100 years ago, 75, 60 years ago, made decisions that have impacted our students positively. It's now our responsibility, I believe, to make those decisions to plan for our students' future and not our past. So I'm really thankful that you were here today. Our team's going to stick around and make sure that you have access to us. If you have any questions, remind your friends, remind your family of tonight's evening session at Cassingham Theater at 7 p.m. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks.